in the body. We're going to get started tonight. I just want to thank and praise God for our leaders in their absence and all of the clergy. So tonight we're going to talk about confronting ourselves. How do we do that? We're going to talk about how do we do that and we're going to we're going to we're going to walk through it because we want to make sure that we as people of God that we are dealing with ourselves through self-sacrifice and dying to self by serving others. So we're going to talk about that tonight, and we're going to start in Galatians chapter 5. And we're going to be moving around in Galatians, and then we'll hit on some other scriptures. But we're going to just get started. I want to start at Galatians 5, verses 13 through 15. Brother Minister Adam, can you read those? Galatians 5, verses 13 through 15. And I pray everyone had a wonderful day today. Brother Adam, take yourself off mute, sir. Thanks, Lord. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And you say 15? Yes, 13 through 15. But if, you, but if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. So tonight we're going to, thank you, sir. We're going to talk about this the Lord let me to go here because he's saying, Paul is speaking and he's saying, brother, and if you've been called into liberty, liberty, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. In order for us to deny ourselves and be self-sacrificing, we have to deny this flesh. We have to crucify the deeds in the flesh. So Paul, he was he has spoken truth to the Galatian Christ, Christians. That truth applies to all Christians even today. Paul's plea for believers was for us not to waste their freedom in Christ on serving their own flesh and their own selfish desires. Instead, he has told those free in Christ to serve each other in love. He is describing a life of self-sacrifice lived out in response to God's love for us. Now, Paul begins to describe how to live in this way. After all, this kind of love does not come naturally. Not only do we resist giving up our own way, we often simply do not know how to love. Without the rules of the law to God, all of our decisions, how will we use our freedom in Christ to love one another? So with that being said, Paul is telling us not to use this, this life that the Lord has given us to serve our flesh and our own selfish desires. Why is he telling us that? Why is he saying not to use this life that Christ has given us to serve our flesh. Can anyone answer that? Why is Paul saying not to use this flesh? Why should we use this flesh as an occasion to serve ourselves and our own selfish desires? Why is he warning us not to do that? Anyone? Um, praise the Lord, Elder. I would say, yes. um, for one, so that way he can get the glory. We ought to let our light shine before others so that way he can be seen in and through us and we can use it as a tool to witness and win others for Christ. That's one Amen. reason. Amen. That's awesome. Anyone else? Um, I would say because we were born into sin and this flesh no, no good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, that's good. 
That's good. Um, Sister Pauline? Well, exactly. That's what I was about to say. The deacon had already said nothing good on this flesh. So, yeah, that's what my um, point was. So he always spoke it. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else before we move on? Thinking on in the terms that, you know, you don't want to get the glory. You want them to glorify God and see the God that is within you, that lives in you. Amen. Amen. So Paul is, he's saying that because he wants to make it clear the importance of us not being self-absorbed with our flesh because as God used Sister Colleen and the um, brother, there's no good thing that dwelleth in this flesh. Let's talk about sacrifice of self. Some people may say, well, what does it mean when someone sacrifices themselves? A self-sacrificing person gives up what they want so that other people can have what they want. These people were unselfish, self-sacrificing, and they sincerely are concerned about the general good. Let me look at the track. Sister um, Lindora says, and where God is taking us, we can't get there in the flesh. That's very good. So why, what, what are the principles that we, ha we have to apply as we continue? Is this a process? I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me, we're going to talk about some principles that we can apply to our lives so we can continue to maintain and mature in this area to keep this flesh under subjection. Some things can only come through fasting and praying. And that comes with studying the word and applying the word. But when we are self-sacrificing as Jesus Christ was, we have to be able to walk in a way that we die daily each and every day. Priscilla, Eddie, to everyone, Matthew twenty two thirty nine. 39. Okay. So Paul points to the only source of power and wisdom beyond ourselves is the Holy Spirit of God. He revealed in his letter that the spirit comes to live in the hearts of every one of God's sons and daughters. And we can find that in Galatians 4 and 6. Now, Paul tells us to use the freedom in Christ to access the power of God's spirit in our hearts. In our everyday lives, he tells us literally to walk and keep on walking by the spirit's guidance, the power in his guidance. And what does that, what does that look like when we walk in the spirit? Can someone answer that? What does that look like to walk in the spirit? Yes, Sister Colleen. It looks, <clears throat> it looks like the nine fruits of the spirit. Okay. That's what it looks like. If we walk in the nine fruits of the spirit, then we don't have time to walk in the flesh and blood of the world. Okay, so Monica Pervy, I want you to stay right there, Sister Colleen. Monica Pervy said. Kirby said, show love, forgiveness, showing grace to one another. Magna Sister VJ said, magnifying God above everyone and everything else. Minister Crystal Bryce said, following how God wants us to live. Yes. So that means when Sister Colleen, I want to go back to you. So when you say the fruit of the spirit, there may be some people on here that don't know what the fruit of the spirit is. Can you just go to Galatians 5? Yes, 522. And it reads, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and against such there is no law. So we know in the word. Thank you for reading that, Sister Carlene. But we just want to make sure we expound on these verses 
because there may be some people on here that don't know. So we don't want to take for granted that, you know, people know. And I thank you so much for um, reading that. So we have to, we have to, this is a lifestyle. Sister Jewel said to live a life that depends on the spirit and power of God and to do what we, we must have intimacy with God. Amen. So the fruit of the spirit, these are all of the things. And in the word, there are scriptures in the word to that will correlate to the fruit of the spirit, what it looks like, what it what we have to do in our lives to take on the character of Christ as God used Sister Rotina Lacey to say. And we have to do that daily. That's not something that we put up, we pick up and we put down. It's it's a practice. It's a daily practice. It's our lifestyles that it's a part of our lifestyles that we do these things and we have to be intentional about doing these things. That means if I'm going to deny myself and if, if I'm going to be self-sacrificing, Sister Cherie said, yes, it is daily saying no to your flesh and saying yes to Jesus. Amen. So I have to daily, when I get up in the morning, I'm thanking the Lord and I'm praising the Lord. I'm watching what I put in my my ear gates and my eye gates. I'm being intentional about how I do things. No, I'm none of us are perfect, but this is a lifestyle. So we have to daily deny ourselves. And there's situations that we face in our workplaces, in our families. And Sister Lakeisha said to walk in the spirit means that we yield to God's control. We follow God's lead and we allow God to exert his influence over us. Amen. So we have to have an open heart for God and we have to have a love for one another, but we also have, have to have first and foremost, a love for God. Now, when we go to Matthew 26 verses 36 through 40, I'm, I'm, in that verse, Jesus is speaking to his disciples earlier in his ministry. Jesus had affirmed the two greatest commandments. The, can somebody read that Matthew 26 verses 36 through 40? Matthew 26 verses 36 through 40. Okay. Then Jesus came. Go ahead, Sister Kia. Go ahead. Then Jesus Kia. came. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons, Zebedee, and he began to sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Amen. So here Jesus was, he was self-sacrificing, but the thing that allowed him to be self-sacrificing was his communion with God. It was to pray to the Lord for, for and so he could be in alignment with the father. And in his communion with God, his flesh was dying. And when he said, nevertheless, not my will, he was dying to himself to allow God to rule and reign through him. And that's something that we have to do. And then who he took with him. And even though they could not be there, they, you know, they didn't stay awake, but still it was his assignment. So like many a time, many times we have individual assignments, all of us, and we cannot depend on others to or wait on them for them to come for us to fulfill our assignments. We have to seek God 
in prayer and in the study of his word and obey his word that he can use us as we deny ourselves because when we, we're self-sacrificing and we sacrifice ourselves, a life of sacrifice is worshiping God with our hearts. It's worshiping God with all of us, not giving him saying, okay, I'm only going to give you this part, but I'm going to keep this part. I'm not going to love that sister the way that you're telling me to, because I'm going to use this part and keep it to myself. But no, Jesus Christ, each and every day, he sacrificed of himself so he could continue to serve others through his love and through his vessel. And, and, and many times Jesus, he used, he showed his love and his demonstration and his life. And that is what God is calling us to do, not just to be people to say it, but to live it in our lives. And as we live it in our lives and as we fast and pray, the Lord desires to show the demonstration of his spirit and his power through us as we continue to walk in his word. And as we continue to just stay before God in prayer. Now, in Jesus' early ministry, he gave us the greatest commandment. And that was that we love one another. That love is a commandment. It's not an option. And the reason the Lord wanted, he, he was telling me to focus on love because in order to deny oneself, you're going to have to walk in love because this is not something that we can do in our own strength. But when we deny ourselves and we go before God and we allow the Lord to use us, and that means we have to pour out of the old ways. And, and that's not something that just happens. We have to examine ourselves daily, daily. And the situations that we go through, and many times, the Lord will not allow us to move on from situations. Sometimes we find ourselves back in the certain, a certain situation over and over because the Lord wants us to apply the word to that situation. So as we apply the word and we learn from that, then we begin to deny ourselves. We're denying ourselves by applying that word to our lives so we can continue to walk in the spirit. And we discuss what that looked like. It means to walk in the fruit of the spirit. So as we apply the word and we take the word wholeheartedly, as Sister um, Lindora said, in our hearts, then we can go before God and we can continue to walk upright. And then those situations that we face, when we confront ourselves, we're not looking at someone else. We're not playing the victim like, we don't have a responsibility in this walk. These things, we have to come in alignment. We have to partner with God. We have to partner and allow the Holy Spirit to work, work through us. And we do that when we know the, the word of the Lord. And God uses those things to speak to us so we can submit to him. And that is what denying self is all about. And we should do that each and every day. It's not about being right. It's not about, oh, I have to have the last word. It's not about talking about our brothers and sisters. It's not, it's about humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God so God can use us. And that's where it comes. It comes, you know, a lot of times we as people, we go through things and we Sometimes we like to just walk in the room and let everybody know, oh, I'm here, you know, and um, whatever, whatever. But Jesus never walked like that. Jesus was very humble. He denied himself. He walked in humility. And that is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to walk in humility, not arrogance and pride. Because when we walk in arrogance and pride, we're not denying ourselves. We're not denying ourselves. We're lifting ourselves up. So that means we're allowed, we're being resisted by God because he said he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So it's important that as we deny ourselves, denying ourselves, that means we're dying to this flesh. 
and we're taking on the word of God and we're allowing the word of God to lead and to guide us. Again, Paul is painting a picture about us setting our, aside our own power and relying on God's power. In the same way, we could not fulfill the law by our own effort. Paul tells us to quit trying to serve each other and love on our own. The spirit of God in us is available and willing to help. And if we don't have the spirit, we need to seek God for the spirit. And, and, it's, and, it got, and Paul was saying how in Christ, we have to avoid and we have to give up our own desires. It's how we overcome our strong appetites. And that is not doing what we feel, but we have to do what the Holy Spirit is telling us to do. And many times when we get in situations, uh, some people, they blame others, but this is where we have to take ownership and continuously look in the mirror of the word to examine ourselves. And in second, in second Corinthians three and 17, it says, the Lord is the spirit. When we were saved, the Lord as the spirit came to live in our spirit so we can behold him in our spirit by fellowshipping with him in prayer and in the word. And as we behold the Lord, he soaks us with all he is. So it's an intentional thing and as we soak in the spirit of God, and what does that look like? It looks like us meditating on his word. It looks like before I go to be ignorant or rude to someone, I'm going to say, what does the word say about this? So I'm going to submit myself to the word and I'm not going to move in my flesh. So that takes a transformation in order for us to deny ourselves and to grow more into the image and likeness of Christ, we have to go through a transformation process. The soaking in us is being transformed metabolically. This is God's way of changing us by an inward spiritual metabolic process of his life operating in us. Physical metabolism is the process that maintains the life of an organism or organism through metabolism an organism lives, grows, and develops. Lifeless things like rocks don't undergo metabolism. We, we, we as God's children aren't lifeless. We receive the, the, the divine life of God in our spirit when we were born again. Now God wants his life to spread from our spirit into every part of our being, especially our soul. This is how we're inwardly transform, transformed and God is actually expressed in our living outwardly. So God had used someone to say that earlier, but we allow that to happen as we go through the, the process of God, the word going into us and us applying that word and us walking in that word there's a transformation that takes place in us where when we face different situations, I shouldn't handle a situation today like I did yesterday. I should be, I should think about it and be intentional about going to the word so I can crucify me, so I can die to myself, so I can kill this flesh. And it's not something that I can start and stop. It's an ongoing process. What does it mean when someone sacrifices themselves? Can someone answer that? What does it mean? What does that, what does it mean when someone sacrifices themselves? What does that can mean? I chime in? Yes, you can. Um, when someone sacrifices themselves, that means they, they're giving them themselves. They're, they're taking the low seat. They're humbling themselves to basically the will or subject themselves to somebody else. Not saying they're being a, a doormat, but they are humbling themselves and not always saying, trying to prove themselves or 
You know, they just giving up themselves to someone else. Not the better words. Amen. Amen. Sister Patricia said, you're placing the interests of someone else above what you may want. Minister Crystal Bryce said, putting your wants, needs aside for others. Sister VJ said, giving myself away so he can use me. It means they are saying, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. And Sister Sylvia said, putting others before yourself. Amen. And that is what we saw in the life of Christ. He did not put himself before others. And this is what we need to continue to, I would say, increase in our lives so the world can see that, so they can see that we're self-sacrificing and we, Elder Clay say, dying to flesh every day. Rick Buchanan said, you're deliberately allowing yourself to be subject to the will of Christ and be utilized in his way. Amen. And this is what the world needs to see in the church, that we deny ourselves and we're self-sacrificing. So if I'm self-sacrificing, if I have a need or I'm going through something. I'm I'm just in my feelings about something. Sister Carlene, she needs something. But I'm all caught up in my feelings and I'm not I'm not I'm so self-absorbed. I can't even discern what she's going through. So as the body of Christ, individually, all of us as we confront ourselves and deal with ourselves in the word so I, I can't spend, all of us go through changes, but because I have to sacrifice myself, worship God with my life, I can't stay in that place. I have to move because it's other sisters and brothers in the body that needs, they may need my prayer, they may need encouragement, Somebody may need Sister Carlene's love, her time. They may need to be ministered to. But if we're so caught up with ourselves in the cares of this life, we can hinder the move that God would like to do in that person's life as to witness to them. Somebody on our job, if someone offends us and then we get in our feelings about it and we don't want to come back and be quick to forgive, we can become a stumbling block for them. So we're definitely not sacrificing and denying ourselves. We're walking in the flesh. So that's why we have to go to the word. Minister Lawanda said, but the truth of the matter is most of us are so earthly minded that we are of no earthly or heavenly good. The Bible is clear that if we want to walk in the manner pleasing to the Lord, we must set our minds on the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Colossians 3 verses 1 through 2. And that's exactly what we have to do. Because if we are called to be free, we do not use our freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, we serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. We are to live in the spirit. This is the kind of encouragement that we need to continue to be those that deny this sinful nature because we were all born into sin, shaped in iniquity. So that's why the self-confrontation and dying to oneself is so important because through the transformation process, as we apply the word to our lives, and yes, like God used Minister Lawanda to say, and we set our minds on things above where Christ is seated on the right hand of God because we have to realize the sacrifice that he made and we cannot focus on the sinful nature, what we, the, the flesh desires because the flesh is contrary to the spirit and the spirit is con contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other all the time so when we make a conscious effort to deny ourselves, then we allow the spirit 
our spirit man to lead and guide us. But if we're going to get into how we feel and what we think, then we're going contrary to the spirit of God. And then we're not trans we're not transforming into the image or likeness of God. We're not walking in the spirit. We're not focusing on the things above. We're focusing on the things in our flesh. So we have to remember we were born into sin, shaped in iniquity. So we have to make an effort as people of God to live disciplined lives, to be the disciples of Christ so people can see the God in us. We have to move away from the different sins, those things that come to hinder us. And we cannot put ourselves in places where it's going to weaken our flesh. If we're going to honor God, we have to honor God with our lives. So we want to be watchful. We want to be prayerful where we go. Where We, we don't want to make any occasion to this flesh. We cannot trust this flesh. We cannot. We have to be watchful. We have to be prayerful. We have to continue to look every day at a scripture to every situation that we're going through. And we meditate on that scripture. So that scripture will go in, that word will go in and it will destroy those things in us. It will destroy our mindsets so we can take on the mind of Christ so we can walk in his spirit that we shall not fulfill the lust of our flesh. So we can continue to walk in love and we must allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. And when we don't, our selfishness will lead us into all kinds of sinful lifestyles. So we don't want to make an occasion to our flesh to sin. We want to continue to walk in the spirit. Many conflicts come when we don't confront ourselves when we're not honest and transparent with God about how we're feeling. We need to be honest and transparent with God to say how we're feeling in situations so we can go to the word of God, take that word, meditate on that word until that root comes up out of us. Because all of us have habits, all of us have traditions that were in our families that have passed down and we need to die to those things so God can continue to elevate us and take us to greater places in him. But we have to, as we walk in love with one another and as we keep God as our first love, we're going to be concerned about the things that we do and how it affects him because we understand the sacrifice that Christ made for us. And when we understand even all the more, and I don't, I don't think we would ever understand in totality the sacrifice that was made. But when we understand the sacrifice that was made, we love him because he gave his life for us. When Adam and Eve, when they didn't confront themselves and they were disobedient, and Eve was seduced by the serpent. We have to go back to the beginning of how the enemy came in and seduced her through her flesh. We have to be watchful and prayerful. That's why self-confrontation is so important because if I confront me, when the Lord says, love your enemies, then I can't worry about when sister so-and-so is going over there. I have to take that personally, evaluate it, and walk in it. So we can't compare ourselves to one another. We have to go to the word and let that word be that looking glass, that mirror that we go into for God to show us and reveal to us what is in us. So why is, how do we serve others? with our lives? How do we serve others? Excuse me for this dog barking. How do we serve others in this walk with our, in our Christian lives? 
Anybody? Can you give me an example of how God has used you to serve someone? By being a positive um, example and by um, being encouragement, just a smile, a hug, a hello. Um, can I help you with that? Um, you know, just letting somebody know that you care about them and that you're here for them. Just a simple smile, a hug makes a, can make a big difference in somebody's life. Amen. Anyone else? Um, on the charity, I would say by um, having a listening ear and prayerfully coming only when it's conducive to the conversation, you know, giving someone the time to hear what they have to say, you, you're you giving a service to them and, and be willing to pray, uh, offer prayer to the situation. That's Amen. one of the steps. Amen. Anyone else? In the chat, it said, by being an example of patience, even when I wanted to set them straight. Amen. Sister Antoinette, by praying for them, Sister Priscilla, using spiritual gifts in a biblical manner, fosters care for one another, eliminates the division in the body. Amen. He's going so fast. Elim eliminates division in the body of Christ and glorifies God. 1 Corinthians 12, 18 through 27. Amen. Sister Monica said, assist in the time of need, fulfilling a tax, taking them somewhere. Sister VJ, keep and keeping in confidence what is shared, being a trustworthy source while praying with them. Amen. Minister Lawanda, being a living disciple and example of the word. Sister Yvette, so good. Serving others, praying listening, financial support, giving of your time, Sister Lindor, giving, Sister Lakia Holmes, praying for others, giving encouragement, and spreading God's word. Sister Lynn, giving people something to hope for. Sister Cheryl, smooth, seeing a need and fulfilling it. Amen. Sister Anita Lewis, helping those that may not be able to help themselves at a particular time. Amen. And that is what the body of Christ is. It's us serving one another and being there because Brother Rick Buchanan used the gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. Amen. And when we do that, when we love one another and we go and we sacrifice ourselves, we are being used to show the character of Christ. And that is the whole thing in, the, in this is Sister Priscilla, continue to judge yourself and your motivation to serve others in the light of God's word, John 5, 41, amen. So we have to be able to be accessible to God to fulfill the assignments that God has called us to. And what that means is having a life with God of continuing to learn. We can never ever get to the place where we don't learn, where we don't continue to love and to learn. It's a daily process because this walk, God is so vast and his ways are past our ways and his thoughts are way past our thoughts. So we make ourselves available by denying ourselves, sacrificing of ourselves so we can be used by God as a vessel to go and to show others who he is. And it's like, we have to be able to be so saturated in God, with the word of God, and applying the word to our lives, that people literally see God in us. They see a difference because 
when you stay before God and you submit yourself to God and you're confronting yourself and you're allowing the word to go in and uproot those things as you are making effort to apply that word to your lives, transformation takes place in us. We just continue to be patient in tribulation. So sometimes the Lord allows us to go through things and he tests us, but it's to show and to reveal his character through us. Some of the things that we go through, God is allowing us to go through so others can see how we're walking in the character of Christ, how we're walking in the fruit of the spirit how we're not getting in our flesh. And I'm not saying we don't have times when we say, Lord, this is hard. I can't do that. And, and this is what the Lord wants because he makes, he makes his, his strength is perfect in our weaknesses. So when we go to God and we say, Lord, I can't do this. He will give us strength through his word to do it. And he will give us instruction through his word to do these things. Elder Jewel said, yes, others being able to see our walk is key. Sister Kia said, amen. So it's important. Luke 6, 27 through 28 says, but to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. So when we deny our flesh, the spirit of the Lord illuminates through us and it gives us the power to love our enemies, to do good to those that hate us, to bless those who curse us and pray for those who mistreat us. Because a lot of times people are being used by the enemy and they don't realize it. And, and people who are unsaved, I've heard Christians say, can't believe they did that. Well, first of all, we have to realize they're not saved. They don't know how to confront themselves. So as we live as those living sacrifices, they can see through our living and our love and God will bring the conviction upon their hearts and he will open their hearts where they will say it's something different. It's something different about her. And God will change the situation. I had a situation on my job where my um, manager, she was going through something and she was, she was going, she was coming off. She was being very, very rude and very, very um, ignorant. And the Lord said, just continue to walk in love with her. And it was division being sold on the job. And I, God used me to tell her, I said, I have to separate myself because I can't be a part of, gossiping. I can't be a part of backbiting. And she took offense to that. But we had, a, I, and the Lord said, just continue to pray, daughter, and continue to lead by example. And as the Lord used me to pray and I confronted myself, because it was some days she really got on my nerves with her rudeness. But I had to humble myself and I had to look past me to see what it was God was showing me so I could pray for her. Last week, we had a meeting, and the vice president had a meeting with all of us. He said, we will not tolerate people criticizing people, talking about people. We want everyone to come together. And that was the answer to my prayer. Sister Eddie said, rejoice and give thanks, and for every situation, remain content. is God's provision for all areas of our life knowing that endurance and trials help conform you to the image of Christ, committing to please the Lord in all things instead of, of living to gratify our flesh, fleshly desires. Galatians 5, 16 through 17, Ephesians 5, 20, and Thessalonians 5, 18. Oh, you ready to teach the class, sis. So when you come out of teacher training, so what God was showing me as I we die daily and we allow God to use us, our vessels. And it's, it wasn't about me. It was about God using me to be a witness, but praying for the whole department. 
for God to come through and show himself. But had I been nasty to her, or had I responded and I did not confront myself, and, I, and the Lord said, walk in the word. So I just began to meditate on the word. And I was like, God, it's in your hands. You're going to get the glory out of that. And that is what we have to do. And every situation that we go through, and I learned this from Minister Lawanda in the teacher training class, is use everything as a teaching moment. We're not just here to teach in the classroom. We're not just here to teach on deep dives. We're not here just to teach on, on um, in the pulpit, but every day is a teaching moment when these things come. So we have to glorify God and we have to have joy and tribulation. Sister Monica said, every day we we're faced with making a choice, Joshua 24 and 15. Sister Eddie said, amen. Sister Yvette said, yes. Elder Tamara said, amen. Sister Jewel said, yes. So when we get faced with these situations and God is allowing these situations to come, we got to say, Elder Bernetta said, absolutely. We have to look at the situation and say, okay, God, you're God. Why are you allowing this to happen? I'm not going to get depressed about this. I'm not going to get down about this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to confront me in the word. I'm not going to look at what this person is doing. I'm going to confront me. I'm going to go to this word. I'm going to decree. I'm going to declare the word. Because I am not going to bite, I am not going to devour my brothers and sisters, and even those that are unsaved. But I'm going to walk in love, as my Father has commanded me and his word to do. And I'm not going to be full of myself and, and being selfish, saying, oh, it's about me. No, it's not about me. It's about God being glorified through everything we go through. So anything that we go through, we have to know if God is testing us, he's going to give us the power, he's going to give us the anointing, and he's going to give us the fire to go through it. Why? Because he wants, he wants to be glorified in this earth. So he's calling us to confront ourselves in the word of God. Stop looking at what others are doing, tearing them down. No, that's not God's way. We are to use our gifts to edify the body of Christ. Sister Patricia Johnson said, we sometimes do not realize that there is an underlying issue that causes non-believers and believers to strike out. Sometimes it has nothing to do with us. If a disciple, disciple can be sifted and he's walking with Christ, why would those, why would, those around us be also elder miller hit it straight on we must confront self and allow god to get the glory it is for his glory and that is what god is calling us to all the more is body belief of believers because many times christians have gotten away with what the word truly means and what it means to be selfless what it means to be self-sacrifice and giving of oneself and not doing it in a way like when you look at the first story of giving of oneself, you look at Cain and Abel and how Abel gave a sacrifice that was from his heart, but Cain did it in a way that was not pleasing to God. So one might say, well, why did God accept Abel's sacrifice and not Cain's? Because Abel gave it with his whole heart. Abel gave it with a pure intention. And that's why everything that we do, we have to do it to glorify God. Everything that we do is to glorify God. So I can't do it in my own strength. And we all have to realize that we cannot do it in our own strength. And that's why Jesus said in Luke 23 to 34, and Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he came into this world he showed us self-confrontation all the way. Jesus walked confronting himself because when the, the Pharisees, when the Sadducees and the scribes, when they came against him, Jesus confronted himself to make sure he responded in the word. Why? Because he was not going to come in agreement with the enemy. So we should not give no occasion 
to the flesh so we can help Satan's cause. We should not want to help Satan's cause. Why? Because he is a counterfeit. He is the enemy of God. He is the enemy of us. So whenever we make an occasion to the flesh, we are supporting the enemy. So we must continue to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of this ugly flesh and don't give an occasion to it. And sometimes some of us might say we might have companions that's nasty. We might have children that's going wayward. But I tell you, when we submit under the mighty hand of God, God will exalt himself through us. But it's the key is the self-confrontation because that's the whole battle. When the flesh is warring against the spirit and the spirit is trying to take control, but we continue to make an occasion to the flesh through the end of conflict. We must submit to God in everything we do and not make an occasion to our sinful ways. The acts of the sinful nature, if they're obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, envy, drunkenness, and all other things. Paul was telling us the acts of the sinful nature, and it doesn't make for a very pleasant reading because some things, some things are just so against what God has ordained us to walk in. When God created Adam and Eve, it was for them to walk in love and joy and peace. Elder, will you be teaching more in-depth lesson on? Yes, as we go along, we'll be teaching on those things. But tonight I have to stay on topic with what the um what self-confrontation means, but we will go more into that. So we we have to understand that we have to nail our sinful nature to the cross. And we shouldn't feel any mercy for nailing. We should, she said it's a thought. We shouldn't be concerned whether about nailing our sinful nature to the cross. But we have to allow those things to be crucified with Christ and in Christ, that we walk in alignment with him, that we die to the things of this flesh. We should have no respect or regard at all for our sinful nature. That means we should not feed our sinful nature. We should not feed those things that are in the in, in our sinful nature that will cause us to go astray. Because when we feed the flesh and we make occasion for the flesh, we open the door for the adversary to come in and to use us in ways to sabotage what God is doing in our own lives. Love, joy, peace for the Christian, our first love is our love for God. And this is demonstrated through our love for our neighbor. Our chief source of joy is the joy of the Lord. And our deepest peace, our peace with the God of all peace. Patience, kindness, goodness. Patience is sometimes called long suffering. Patience is long suffering. And as we go through patience and long suffering, we develop. Christian character, we develop the character of Christ. So the whole thing is to confront ourselves, to walk in the spirit, no matter what situation we go through, we have to allow, David says, nail your simple nature to the cross. I love that. It's the same thing that mentioned in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Sister Patricia said, we do more that is righteous than not. It is a journey that is definitely transforming, focusing on God and the things above, confronting self. That is a big one. So that's the whole thing is confronting self and being sound in the word of God. 
nailing ourselves with the cross as Jesus Christ was crucified. And even when he went through the crucifixion, how the, the flesh was being beaten and how the flesh was being destroyed because he was showing us, he was allowing that even to show us through that, how this flesh is just a place that houses our spirit and how we can't give in to the flesh because Satan knows us by the flesh. But when we walk in the spirit and when we're led by the spirit, we're hidden under the shadow of the almighty. So even as we're confronting things, there's a part of us that God is filling even all the more so we can continue to grow in the things of God. Biblical meditation enables this to happen. So we must put that theory in practice where we're constantly meditating on the word of God and that it takes discipline and it is a process, but it can be done with the Holy Spirit. So that is why we have to meditate on the Holy Spirit. And as we apply the word and study the word, we rightly divide the word by as we go into the word and we use the necessary resources so we can understand what the word is saying so we can walk in those things, div rightly dividing the truth. And then we become Christ's example. Those who live according to the flesh, they have their minds set on what the flesh desires are. But those who live according to the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. And we can find that in Romans 8 and 5. To help us do what Jesus would do, we need to have our minds set on spiritual things, what the spirit desires. So as we do the biblical meditation, that means we're, we're memoriz memorizing it. We're chewing it over and over again. So we're feeding our spirit man, and this helps us to do this, and it has a very powerful effect in our lives. It is used to it used to be called a means of grace. It's one way together with other means of grace, like prayer, worship, and fellowship. When the Lord did the Lord's Supper, when they came together to fellowship, they talked about the things of God. When they came together, it was to discuss God. It wasn't to discuss all of these things that of the flesh that sometimes we do. But when we come together to fellowship, even when we could come into the house of the Lord, each day as we're confronting ourselves and we're walking in the spirit, the Holy Spirit supernaturally goes in and it uproots things in us. And then there's some things in us that we don't even know needs to be uprooted. But as we stay before God in prayer, just like the woman touched the Lord, he, she touched the hem of his garment. When we go into prayer, we can touch God in such a way that there's a virtue that is released and God gives us strength through our spirit to continue to deny this flesh. So we have to, each and every day, walk actively in the way of the spirit and not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And when and that looks like just showing love to people when when people don't like us for no reason and you just walk in love and it's and God can discipline you in such a way when you're self-confronting yourself, you're not so concerned about their feelings about you. You're more concerned about how to please you're gonna please God. Sister Julia said every second, and that's it. It's to focus on those things above and not those things of this earth. So as we continue to focus on him and set our mind and our desires on him, that's a that's a powerful thing in our lives because we're going to remain in a way that we are watchful and prayerful and confronting ourselves, loving as Christ desires for us to love. And the only way we know these things is by studying the word of God and fasting and praying to keep this flesh under subjection. So we have to allow this to be 
the way that we choose to live. And that is confronting ourselves, not looking at someone and trying to exalt yourself to belittle them. That's not God's way. God's way is for us, for us to walk in humility. As we humble ourselves before God, the Lord will exalt us. And we in this walk, this Christian walk, only God knows. He knows the ins and the outs. We know that this battle has already been won. So we have to continue to walk humbly before God. And we cannot just take it as an occasion and go back to places that's familiar. We cannot go back to familiar places, not even in our own mind. But as we continue to study the word, God continuously matures us in the things of him. So he will get the glory because the Lord desires to reveal his glory through his people. We are his body. We are the body of Christ. So if each one of us are confronting ourselves in the word, even if that husband is nasty or that child is going wayward, we can fast and pray and go before God. And God has given us authority to take over those things that's pulling on our children and in our marriages and in our families and even in our church families. So the, the confronting of oneself is so important. That's why the apostle Paul spoke about it because he knew what it meant. Look what everything that he faced, but he knew that he had to confront himself. He had to stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, Galatians 5, 1. He had to stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made him free and he could not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So he was telling us, we have to stand in the liberty. This is a liberty. This walk with God is a liberty. It is a gift from God that he allows us to walk in the liberty of his spirit because he's defeated all principalities. He's defeated all powers. So as we confront ourselves and the spirit of the Lord arises in us, the Lord will use us to wage war against the adversary in so many ways to defeat him, to tear his kingdom down. And like God used the sister to say earlier, we never know what other people are going through. But as we continue to confront ourselves and die daily and ask God to increase our discernment as we walk in the word, as we're walking in his spirit, that discernment allows us to pick up and see what others are going through not with the natural eye, but through the spiritual eye. And that is why killing this flesh is so important. And that is what God has called us to do, to be warriors, to be those that show him, to be those when we go before him in prayer, that his power is being manifested in his life, in our lives, so others can see so demons can see. So when we give up something, when we confront ourselves and we kill the flesh, there's an exchange that goes on in the, the, the realm of the spirit. God is exchanging. He's given us more of his power as we die to ourselves. And that's why it's so important. That's why Paul said, I die daily. We have to die daily. Sister Cherie said, it's good to pray for discernment and listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that's what self-confrontation is all about. Because if I'm confronting myself and I'm walking in the word, the Lord can use me to bring peace and turmoil. And that's what God has called us to do. He's called us to be his disciples and to walk up right before him and to be able to discern and use the gifts that God has given us to walk in it, to be peacemakers, to be those, yes, God's sister Patricia said, yes, miracles and madness. Yes, where miracles come out of the madness. Let me, let me, God, God is 
a perfecter of bringing great things out of adversity. Everything we see in the Bible, we read in the Bible, those great people of God went through adversity. But when they confronted themselves and they went to the Lord and they spoke the word, God gave them instructions to overcome everything. And when they couldn't do it, God stepped in supernaturally and intervened to destroy the plans of the enemy. Minister Adams said, it's a process that should happen consciously and unconsciously. And yes, you are correct. And this is what God wants. So when the adversity come and those giants raise up, we go to fasting and praying. And we're going to take that slingshot of the word and bring those giants down. And that is what we should be doing. Growing. Continuously. In the things of the Lord. And they says in Galatians 6 and 10, it says, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are in the household of faith. So as we, we should be coming together, confronting one another, if we're doing projects, if we're, if we're working together, we should use that time, the opportunity, and do good unto all men. So as I confront myself and I do not react to what you're saying or what you're doing, and I do my part, I'm coming together as that piece of the body of Christ to build and to edify and to bring glory to his name. Amen. Does anyone have any questions? Um, Sister Eddie, I took a picture of what you put in the text and now see how we can incorporate that. Um, Sister Colleen, take yourself off of mute. This is so awful. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Can you hear me? Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was saying, um, this teacher is so awesome. Cause I'm just I'm reading um the um the book by Bishop. I know who I am, and the chapter yes. now that I'm reading is the I, I am a diamond Christian, and this like go hand on hand because a diamond, how he explains like in the deep earth. And we are but we are special. We Christian. We are we are not as the world. We are Christian, diamond Christian. And how he explained, like the diamond is, is fire. It goes through a lot of fire, go all this process. And when you were telling me about the story about your um your job, you is the fire. You had to show that fire to those co-workers who may treat you wrong. And even with us. As diamond Christian, we are more than conquerors. Amen. We are diamond Christian. We go through the fire. So we have to show the fire of Christ when we don't like it or not, even to the unlovable. Amen. And that's the thing, the unlovable. And 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 I and that's what that's what we have to do because that's the only way they're gonna see Christ. Because even when the woman was caught in adultery and they wanted to stone her. He just knelt down, but he said, you without sin cast the first stone. That's what we have to remember. We all have something we're dealing with. So self-confrontation brings the balance because all of us have, we go through spiritual warfare. We go through things, but God never wanted us to war against one another. We are to come together and to build, to build do kingdom work and have kingdom mindsets. And that only comes through the meditation of the word. And what God does is he illuminates that word in our spirits. And when we fast and we crucify this flesh to keep it under subjection and let the Holy Spirit rule, some people might say, I don't hear his spirit. But when you silence out the noise, when you silence out the cares of this world and you focus on the things above, 
God will give you that. You will hear him. You will know he will unction you. He doesn't deal with all of us the same way, but as we are intimate with him, that intimacy is so important. That relationship with Christ should be more important than any relationship because when you keep him first, everything else is going to come into place because he's going to give you instructions on how to pray for your husband, instructions on how to pray for your children, instructions on how through his word. But we have to confront ourselves daily. Sometimes we don't feel like it, but it's not how we feel. We got to take authority over this flesh and crucify it. That's what self-confrontation is, talking to myself. You're going to get up, you're going to serve, you're going to get up and pray because somebody needs your prayers. It's not about us. Christ died for the sins of the world. He never called us to say we are his children and make it about ourselves. He never called us. Self-confrontation is about examining your own self, which is why I love the scripture, Psalms 139, 23 through 24, when it says to search my heart and take everything out that is not like the Lord. Amen. And David said, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. That's one of my favorite verses. So we're about to close out if anyone else doesn't have any questions or comments. We're going to close out. Elder Clay, great teaching, Elder Charity. Our prayers are with you and your family. Amen. And I'll be praying with you all as well. So we're going to close out. Father God, we just come and we thank you. We ask you, Father, just to have your way to continue to allow us to confront ourselves through your word and let us apply your word to our lives. Let us not look to the things of this world, Lord God, to validate us. Let us not look at shows and things that are worldly and take those behaviors into our lives that cause more conflict. But let us, Lord God, desire more of your word. Let us hunger and thirst after righteousness, that you may continue to fill our cups daily. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. For those of you who are available, please join us tomorrow for six o'clock prayer and then Bible study at seven. God bless you all. And join us this weekend for Sunday morning 